I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. Hi, this is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Christian Roth of DD Diesel. I'm Braden Fleece, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. I want to thank you guys for a lot of messages and follows we've been getting on Instagram and some really cool future episodes that we're going to have. You guys have been working on a lot of cool things the last year, and whether it's a Cummins, Duramax, or Power Stroke, we appreciate you guys telling us about it, asking us questions if you're looking to get your first diesel truck, or just anything you guys are coming across out there. So we encourage you guys to give us a follow on Instagram, just search at the Diesel Podcast. We're also on Facebook as well, and YouTube if you'd like to check out our videos and read some of the comments and discussions that happen in the comment section. They're really insightful. On today's episode, we're going to be chatting with Jeremy from Nitro Gear and Axle, and they've got some brand new Power Stroke parts. It's, uh, it's going to be really interesting to, to learn more about specifically the Super Duty and a true 10.5 inch ring gear set that they have for it. So he's going to tell us about that, some other new products that they have, and then also give us an update on his personal truck. Last time that we chatted with him, he was running a 6.7 Cummins with some uh, upgraded turbos and transmission and some other things, and we heard that he recently switched, so we're going to ask him about that. Before we get to the podcast, though, we want to encourage you guys with spring and summer, that's going to be upon us pretty quick, and with that comes towing and, and longer road trips, and sometimes transmission temperatures can be an issue. So if you're looking to keep those transmission temps in a, a safe range, go to Mishimoto.com and check out the different transmission coolers that they have for your truck or even custom applications. You can search by your year, make, model. And if you have any questions, just reach out to them and they'll be more than happy to answer those. And for our shop owners out there, we know that you guys have been looking for ways to keep your shop stocked. And I think a lot of the last year has been a ton of increased business and people dropping off trucks and keeping inventory on the shelf is definitely one of the top priorities that we're hearing from you guys. I'd like to encourage you to call Turn 14 Distribution or you can Google them and they'll pop right up for you. And if you don't have an account with them, you just fill out a a real easy form and one of their diesel representatives will give you a call, get you set up. Their ordering process is really easy. So if you don't have the time to jump on a phone call, you can just log in to their website, search by product, uh, product number, anything like that. See where it's in stock, the price, how quickly you can get it. It's all streamlined electronically, so you don't have to spend a lot of time waiting on hold. All right, let's get to the podcast with Jeremy and learning about their new Power Stroke products. Jeremy, welcome to the Diesel Podcast, and uh, you're ready for a lot of, well, there's going to be a lot of new racing, got a lot of new things, hopefully events are going this year, so we're excited to chat with you. I know there's a lot of new things that you guys have either out now or coming out, so it's going to be fun to be able to learn more about them and tell our audience what you guys got coming. Excellent. Well, thanks for having us on again. It's been a while since we chatted, so I'm uh, I'm looking forward to kind of catching up with you. I, you know, chatting with you a little bit before the podcast, we were talking about Ford trucks, and Ford trucks have been really popular on the podcast recently. We've been getting a lot of people asking about whether it's engines or transmissions or just different things on the super duties and you'd mentioned some new stuff that you guys are working on so i wanted to kick it off with with the ford new product release or update and and what uh, the ford owners out there can look forward to okay yeah well so i mean for for years ford has used a rear axle known as a uh, sterling uh, it actually came out like in 1985 uh, as a 10 and a quarter diameter ring gear uh, then when they switched to the Super Duty in 1999, they upped that gear set to a 10.5 diameter ring gear. Um, so for years and years and years, all the aftermarket continued to manufacture gears that were a 10 and a quarter diameter and would, you know, put that into Super Duties using a master install kit to go with a 10 and a quarter gear. So nobody's really you know, made a true 10 and a half diameter gear. And we decided it was, uh, it was time to finally do that. So, uh, we've got, uh, boy, the whole gamut, 373, 410, 430, 456, 88, 513, and 538, uh, that are a true 10 and a half diameter gear that suit 99 all the way through 2010 models. Um, most of those are in stock right now. I think there's only like one radio we're waiting on, which is a four, five, six. Um, and then you got the 11 and up stuff, which is uh, 
ten and a half diameter, but it's a huge pinion stem. It's actually a 37 spline pinion. Um, those 11 and up trucks, we've already done, boy, I want to say four different ratios for the 11 and ups, which are, you know, again, a ten and a half diameter. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that should be a big mover for, for nitro gear and axle and, you know, kind of something new and innovative to the market, whereas instead of just continuing to do the same old stuff. Yeah, so if, if I owned a 99 to 2010 Ford and I had stock gears in the truck and I'm looking out there and I, I see I see this kit that goes from a 10 and a quarter to 10 and a half, for the end user or for myself if I had one, what does that provide either you know, with robustness, um, durability, maybe even options. What what does the consumer get going to the true ten and a half on that year range? Well, okay, so the the ten and a half can be backfit into, you know, ninety eight and, and older trucks that, that came with a quarter inch diameter smaller gear. So we can actually put that in the older trucks and, you know, get that strength increase from having the larger diameter ring gear. Um, and then as far as the Super Duty goes, you know, we haven't actually made a gear set that's larger than stock. It's just that the aftermarket never made a 10 and a half diameter. They just continued to use that same 10 and a quarter that was used from 85 through 98. So, you know, and not only that, we have, you know, kind of expanded on things and made several more ratios that were never available from Ford, too. So kind of hitting the mark for, uh, you know, different size tires and ratios that, uh, like specifically like a 430 ratio, um, has been a very popular item that, uh, of course, was never offered from Ford, too. So, Yeah, that's when you were mentioning the ratios, I it, it like uh, this little alarm bell went off in my head because I've never heard that said in the same for same sentence as, a, as the Ford trucks. And so with so many different choices out there for tire size and just different uses that, you know, people have for them, that's really cool that there's more options for, for the Ford truck owner. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, you know, pretty excited about all this. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you about that. What, what kind of new, what other new things are, are coming up for you guys? Uh, well, so the AAM uh, 11 and a half axle that was used under, you know, Dodge, Ram, as well as Chevy and GMC, um, several years ago, we, we decided that you can actually fit a ring gear diameter that's 11.8 into all these 11 and a half housings. Um, so we've made a couple of those ratios for maybe two, three years now, but again, that, uh, that product line has expanded to uh, 373, a 410, 430, 456, and 488, all in that 11.8 diameter. Um, so that, uh, you know, obviously fits a very wide range of, of applications. And, you know, that's a significant upgrade because you're you're talking a gear set that's so uh, five sixteenths inch larger in diameter than than stock, right? So, you know, a substantial increase in strength there. Um, the newer eleven and a half stuff actually changed in t 2019. So, as it stands now, there is not one aftermarket company that makes gears that'll suit a. 19 and up, 11 and a half, or the 12 inch diameter. So that is something that's in the pipeline for 2021 is to develop gears that suit this 19 and up axle too. So be on the lookout for that this next year. That'll be cool. Yeah. And then the other new products I was going to mention are the Jeep Wrangler, the JL, and then the JT Gladiator pickup. Uh, we finally have uh, new gears coming out for those that are kind of unique and exclusive ratios to nitro. They are a 430, a 463, and a 5.29 ratio that, that fits those Jeeps. So now one thing on those, with, with the diesel option being available in these new Jeeps, 
having these unique ratios uh, should work really well with the, you know, the, the uh, RPM range of the diesel motors. Uh, it should be a little bit better fit than what currently exists on the market. Um, and on, on that token, on the Gladiator, we're seeing a lot of people are using these Gladiators to tow with, and a lot of people are optioning for what they call the max tow package. But uh, one thing a lot of people forget about is that you know, they, the first thing they do is they put on a lift kit on their Gladiator and then bigger tires. Well, you know, if the factory max tow rating I think is 7,500 pounds, well, as soon as you lifted your Gladiator and you put 37s on it, you just decreased your your tow rating, right? So, uh, I mean, I'm unable to give you a specific number, but just – for instance, you put 37s on, you probably dropped your tow rating down roughly 5,000 pounds. So, and a lot of people don't really realize that that's the case. Well, that's where Nitro Gear can come in to help you, you know, with these new gear ratios I was mentioning. So that, uh, you know, that's something that's real important if you're, if you're towing. And this, this same thing applies to, you know, all your diesel trucks and, you know, your Toyota Tacoma, your Gladiator, I mean, any vehicle that you've put larger tires on that you're going to tow with, you know. I see that a lot with the Gladiators. Nearly every one that I see a picture of on social media, it's it's lifted. It's got bigger tires on it. They're really cool. I haven't had the chance to drive one with a diesel engine in it. And I want to ask you if, you, if you have, what's your impression of it? I I have yet to drive one. From what I understand, you can order the JL, which is the you know regular Wrangler, with the diesel now. But the JT, I don't think you can actually get your hands on one. For yeah, apparently apparently my wife's sitting here telling me that uh, that they just opened ordering for the Gladiator diesel. So I, apparently you can, you can finally get that now too. So. Yeah, you or me or have to get out there and get some seat time in one. <laughs> I see a lot of a lot of uh, the people in the industry, the diesel industry. You know, they like to off road and stuff, and I see them with their gladiators. So I'm sure they'll be picking up ones with a diesel engine in it here. You know, coming up next year, and you guys will uh, get busy. You know, on them and, and have some first hand driving experience with them, which I'm really interested in. It's it's a really cool looking vehicle, and right. just with the capability of Jeep and the aftermarket and and uh, just what Jeeps are known for, being able to have it with that will be will be pretty cool. Right. And, and, and then we'll have to talk to old Lenny at Dynamite about doing injectors for him too, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think every week or every weekend I see a, a picture he posts on Instagram of him off-roading his Gladiator. So. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. He, he just had that over at our shop, and we, uh, we did gears in it and got him fixed up with some RCV front axles for it and everything, and, Man, he uses the heck out of that vehicle. <laughs> sure looks like they're having fun with it. <laughs> the uh, actually, I had a couple questions. I was I was looking at uh, some of the gear packages that you guys have for the Super Duty and the Duramax and then the Cummins trucks. And I know that when when we've talked before about you know, like why it's important to regear your truck and and whether it's a stock diesel truck or it has lift wheels, tires, is we get follow-up questions about gear oil. And I wanted to ask you guys about what you offer with gear packages or individually on your website. What sort of benefits and what things does it help protect when, I guess, either for, you know, like a, can people use them with a stock gear set if they just need to do maintenance or is it something that's specifically designed for you've got a nitro gear ring and pinion set you just had installed and this is a you know a great product to pair with it right well so you know un nitro gear actually manufactured their own gear oil we partnered up with Schaefer's uh, Schaefer's is a you know, a, a very high-end, well-known oil company that does, you know, motor oils, transmission fluids, and gear oils. And, you know, we kind of approached them because 
they didn't offer the oil we wanted in in a quart bottle. It was only bulk barrel stuff. And the oil we chose to have them make is actually what's known as like a parasynthetic. So it's it's not a full synthetic, but it is a blend of synthetic and mineral-based oil. And the weight of that oil is a 75140, and we actually run that in, I mean, every differential that we do. Uh, I'd say about the only exception where we don't run that oil is in, you know, trophy truck or drag race stuff. We'll actually run an even thicker oil than the 75140. But uh, one of the common questions we get is, yeah, one of the common questions that we get on that is, you know, well, my vehicle calls for a 8090 stock, you know, and, and yours is a 75140. Well, we actually run and prefer the thicker oil over the 8090 in all applications because it just, it retains that viscosity better when things start to heat up. So, you know, as we're driving our truck down the road, towing or not, or if it's got larger tires, you know, the more strain we're putting on stuff, the more heat we're building up in that differential. So just like a motor or anything else, as things get hot, that oil viscosity tends to, you know, thin out. So that's why we basically recommend using the thicker oil in, in everything. And... The other thing about the parasynthetic is that it is approved by all aftermarket differential companies, be it ARB, Auburn, Eaton. None of those companies that make a limited slip differential that have any sort of a friction surface in it recommends a full synthetic oil. So that's one of the other main reasons why we chose the blend versus a full synthetic you know when you guys wanted or you know or, or chatted with with shapers and said hey we really we we would like to get this in a quart size is i'm sure with the amount of differentials that you guys see and the feedback from dealers and customers there's probably a lot of failure points that you guys hear about or see yourselves with stock trucks is it is it something that can just happen with just a lot of miles or, you know, I imagine a lot of towing and of course performance, you know, can definitely, or racing can put a lot of strain on it, but what, what what's kind of the failure point, you know, on them for a daily driver? Well, I, I mean, if it's not a race application, your biggest factor here would really be heat. Um, back to the heat thing with, you know, say a new ring and pinion, a new ring and pinion has not gone through the break-in process. So, you know, when, when you put that new ring and pinion in and you start driving your truck, it just wants to continue to build heat. So, you know, the break-in cycle is basically a heat up and a cool down cycle that we're going to do three to five times. We're going to get that gear set nice and hot by driving it, you know, say up to about 60 miles an hour, maybe 15 minutes or so is going to get it nice and hot. Um, you know, basically what I, where I'm going here is we don't want to drive on it too long. We, you know, we don't want to put a new gear set in, go hit the freeway and do an hour long drive because what it does is it just, it just cooks the oil and then that oil can no longer lubricate. And when that happens, you then kind of lose, you lose the hardness on the face of the teeth. So, you know, and as, as soon as the oil's not doing its job and you start losing the hardness, then, I mean, your gear set is done. It's, it's just, you, you can ruin a new gear set by getting it too hot. And the same thing goes for, um, for, for towing. Like, I mean, a brand new vehicle, a lot of manufacturers will not really tell you that you do need to actually break in that gear because even though your truck's brand new, you just went out and bought a dually and hooked it up to your gooseneck and, boy, now i got to go from Georgia all the way to Oklahoma. Well, you you would basically ruin that brand-new gear set because you just cooked it. You got it way too hot, you know. So the break-in is uh, very important as well as, 
you know, using the right oil and stuff. You got me thinking about another question when you mentioned the hardness of the, of the gear, the gear teeth. And that was something else I saw that you guys had, which was Rockwell hardness. And I didn't really want to get you like completely into the definition of Rockwell hardness, but just as you know, if someone's new to their truck or to modifying them and they're like, well, what's Rockwell hardness as it pertains to my gear set? What do you guys shoot for or look for in something that's going to be, say, a daily driven or tow truck versus, you know, some of the the guys that are out there racing? It's just a off-road race vehicle. Well, when it, when it comes to heat treating of the gears, you essentially have a heat treat that would be used on a, on a vehicle that was a street driver or, you know, your daily driver. And then you've got a different heat treat that is done to racing applications, specifically like drag race stuff where you've got massive amounts of power and a huge slick and you've got that, that shock load from launching from the line. So, you know, the difference there, the street gears are a harder Rockwell so that, you know, we're not uh, wearing into the face of the tooth, right? So it, it will handle, you know, 100,000 plus miles because it's a, it's a harder surface. The drag ray stuff is, when it's heat treated, it's done a, a little bit softer so that when that car, truck, whatever it is, leaves the line, and those tires wrinkle and fold and all that, the teeth can actually move or flex just, you know, ever so slightly. I mean, you wouldn't be able to see it with the naked eye, but it allows for that tooth to kind of give rather than snap off. Oh, okay. It was, gosh, we've been chatting about diesel trucks on the podcast for almost five years now and i never even thought or never asked or anytime we've ever talked about what's the hardness of the gears and are are they different for different applications and i saw that and i I wanted to definitely make sure make sure that i asked you that right yeah and i mean on a regular sales call you know like something like that doesn't really come up but you know on occasion i guess it's it mainly comes up when you get a you know drag racer on the phone or Mm -hmm. something yeah but it is always kind of neat to see like a gear set that didn't get broken properly that that built up too much heat so you can actually look at the the face of the tooth and and there'll be like a step in it from where they kind of wore through the the heat treat so those are those are kind of interesting gears to look at when they've been cooked and when somebody buys a gear package is that in say the break-in procedure is that something that's you know, in the instructions, if it's say a brand new shop that it may not have, have worked with you guys before, or if somebody doing it at home, do you guys have that listed? So they know exactly what they need to do for time and heat cycles to do the proper break-in. Yeah. The break-in procedure is in the nitro install guide. Uh, it's also, uh, available, I think like as a PDF on our website. Um, so yeah, I mean, we try and kind of preach that almost, right? Just because a lot of people will, you know, overlook it. But it's actually a very important step in in setting up your new gear. And, and something too, like with chatting with so many like engine builders and racers and and everything, is we all know that there's a break in with the engine, and whether it's a race one or just uh, you know a new a new uh, one put in a, a daily driver we expect the break in we know about it but i could see it you know potentially being overlooked or just not thought about if you've never done a ring and pinion set before and and right. not knowing or you know trying to find that information and definitely don't want to cook the gears on a on a new set right yeah it, it's uh you, your differential i would say is oftentimes overlooked um we kind of joke with a lot of people that are building, you know, an off-road vehicle or a drag race vehicle. You know, they uh, get a price on something, and let's just say drag race. Well, we offer that billet third member. You know, by the time you get that billet third member built to the hill with a traction device and a 10-inch gear, I mean, you're talking four to $5,000 for this third member. 
And, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, wow, that's a lot of money for a rear end. But it's like, well, wait a second. Didn't you just spend 50000 on your motor and another 30000 on your transmission? So we kind of joke about that because it's like, well, you spend all this money in other places on your car. Don't skimp on the rear end because if the rear end fails at the line, you're done, you know? Yeah. There's no winning that that pot of money at the end of the end of the weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see or, or just to to hear how everything is so interconnected with, like on the racing side between the motor, the transmission, the rear end, and how how important it is to you know either not not cut corners. I guess I, I guess I could say it. Yeah, that's that a way. good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, because we, we, I know we all try to do it or, you know, think about, well, is there a place I can save money? And there's just some places you can't do it. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> and the more vehicles you build and stuff, the more you kind of realize, like, yeah, I'm, I'm better off spending more money and doing it right the first time rather than trying to save $20 here just so I can redo it in another year, you know? Oh, oh exactly. Yeah. Uh, the last time we chatted, you were telling us about your truck, um, your Cummins. I think you just you had a set of uh, compound turbos on it, and and I remember how much you liked it. And I was going to ask you if you've done any changes to it, or if you're thinking about doing some new stuff to it. Uh, I actually I actually sold that truck, and um, now I've I've moved on to the new 2020 Ford because I wanted the the new 10 speed that is that shared transmission between the GM and the Ford. Yeah. So, yeah, I picked up a 2020 F450 that uh, has already got almost 19,000 miles on it already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that my Ram that I got rid of, yeah, we had just done uh, the ATS, you know, compound set up on it, and I probably put... I'm going to say five to 6,000 miles on that thing. And I mean, let me just tell you, after doing those turbos, it just really woke the truck up. I mean, the, the amount of power it had uh, was, was just amazing. And it just, I mean, it, it felt like you could tow your house if you wanted, you know, what's been your, what's been your impression of the, the 10 speed? Auto? The 10 speed is great. I mean, you've got, all the gearing you've got the low end gearing you've got multiple overdrives um my f450 actually came from the factory with a 430 ratio which you know uh, 430 is is the go-to ratio for almost all diesels when we put 37s on them so you know i actually put uh, a bds four inch kit on my truck uh, we did uh, fuel 22-inch wheels and Nitto 37-inch tall tires, and, man, that truck with the 430s now is just perfect. I mean, it uh, it was a little bit on the high side of RPM, like, you know, from the factory, and, you know, now with the bigger tires, it, it dropped the RPM at freeway speed, so I want to say about 400 RPM. And it's wow. just like in that sweet spot now with the 37s. And I mean, I don't even need to re-gear my truck having 430s already in it, you know? I've been getting some, some feedback from from listeners um, that have picked up either you know either the, the GM 10-speed or the Ford 10-speed and just how much they appreciate and like it. And I think with these these newer trucks they're just they come with so many things that are that are that are nice to either daily drive or tow with and i know the you know the 10 speed stuff is still kind of relatively new so i'm always curious when i hear someone has one just what they think compared to you know the six speeds that were out there whether it was a ford or an allison or or 68 rfe or something like that so it's cool to hear that that you like it and what it how capable it seems just you know, kind of right off the lot Right. You know, and not only that, I mean, a big testament is that, you know, 19,000 miles on the truck since March. And I would venture to say that, oh, I'm going to say eight, 9,000 of that has been hooked up to a 48 foot triple axle gooseneck. And uh, I mean, not once towing or anything have I even, I've never had any check engine lights or codes or anything. So, I mean, it's been 
it's been a darn good truck so far. I mean, I've been a Cummins guy for years and years and years, and I probably would have stuck with, you know, a Ram with a Cummins, but I, they're just, they're kind of behind when it comes to, you know, having all the gears like Ford and GM these days. I heard that recently when um, doing an episode and I was chatting with the guest afterwards and we were just talking trucks and he's like, I've been a Cummins guy since the late nineties, but yeah. my daily drive is a new power stroke. And I said, well, what made you do that? And it was the transmission and it was something that was enough for him to invest his money in it to right. you know, tow trailers and things like that is, you know, he loved the power of the Cummins engine, loves the interiors and the options, but just the six speed versus the 10 speed and, and what it does with the power band and, you know, cruising on the highway was just enough to make the jump. So I mean, you're just, you're always in the power band, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we all want with these trucks is to, to be right there. And it it seems like GM and Ford have definitely, definitely listened and, and provided that. I know whenever, whenever we chat about gearing, there's always so many questions that people have that, and I'm, usually don't know the answer to them so i always like to to ask you you know if somebody's listening and they have a question about you know the the new ford gears that you have or the new aam or something for their gladiator what's the best way for someone to reach out chat with you guys get those questions answered and you know if they're looking to get a a gear set or you know just find out more information the best way to contact you guys yeah, I mean, best way is just uh, probably hop on the websites, and there's a toll-free numbers. Um, there's also, you know, I've emails. Um, I think the email is info at nitro-gear.com, um, or there's, you know, the, the toll-free number there, which I don't know off the top of my head, but. We'll make sure and link it. We'll, 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 we'll link it when we post. People can just click over, no matter if they're listening on YouTube or, or uh one of the podcast apps they can they can click on over it was it was really cool to catch up with you today and i had been seeing some things that you know on instagram some new stuff you guys had some really cool pictures there was uh, a lot of cool vehicles a lot of your customers have a lot of really cool stuff that that uh they're building and and seeing you guys post it just it always makes me think of a ton of different questions right that's cool i'm i'm glad that you kind of poked around and looked at some of those photos that's that's good to hear (laughs) yeah i think it's it's really awesome what you guys bring to the diesel aftermarket for you know any of these trucks and and give us the options that that we want for off-roading or towing or just like we were talking about keeping the truck in that that power band right right yeah it's uh you know, hitting this diesel scene uh, gearing market has, has been a big win for us over the last couple of years. I mean, we've we've always been very strong in the Toyota market, but now, um, you know, the brand Nitro Gear and Axle is, is kind of like the go-to on the diesel stuff as well. I mean, just doing these unique ratios and increased ring gear diameters and, you know, we're, we're kind of making a name for ourselves. So, and that's, uh, you know, Partly because of being on this show too. Well, it's it's been really really awesome to see. I think when we did our very first chat, I had mentioned to you that that gear ratios, in my experience, the previous eight years or you know however long it was, it was always like an afterthought. Even in my mind, I never really thought about it. And whenever I would chat with people, it was always turbos, engine, transmission, um, you know, air intake, you know, different things that we were talking about. We always overlooked that. And you had mentioned and said just how important it is and, and what it allows you to do no matter the application. And it's been really awesome to see that take mm-hmm. hold in the right. industry and people are asking about it. And I see it on YouTube comments and I see it on other people's pages, just things that, that are being asked. So I think that's a, a tremendous, you know, testament to what you guys have done and the, the people and the companies that you guys work with to be able to show the benefits of it. And now it's not so much that afterthought, it's something if people plan it. I've seen these build lists that people say, Hey, can you take a look at, you know, this list that I'm working on for parts and they'll have stuff in there, you know, they'll have the, this nitro gear package in there. And it's really cool to see that. Right. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. I, I like seeing that. Well, I, I uh, appreciate your time today, Jeremy. And uh, 
letting us know these new products that are coming out. I'm excited for them. Can't wait to see them. And uh, next time we chat, we can get a uh, uh, an update on your F450 and see how you you still like it and and uh, how many more miles you got on and how much towing weight you've had since last time we chatted. So it'll definitely be fun. Okay, that sounds great, Patrick. Thanks for having me on. Don't forget, diesel fans, make sure and head on over to Mishimoto.com. Check out cooling products that they have for your truck. And for our shop owners out there, whether you just started your business or you've been around for a long time, if you're not set up with Turn 14 distribution, you definitely need to reach out, give them a call, and see the difference that they make for getting product to you and helping you keep trucks on the road. Until next time, keep the shiny side up.